Oh yeah, what are we saying guys? Black Horse there and welcome back to another video today. We're back on Pro Cycling Mode 2019 for episode number 35 of the YouTube Pro Cycling Career Mode hashtag YTC35 and today marks the final races of season 1. Uh, we'll have Il Lombardia and Paris Tour. I'll try and find a variant for Paris Tour before the race. So yeah, we'll, we'll see if we can do something. But first of all, uh... This marks the final episode, so you better destroy the like button if you want to see a season 2 happening. Because uh, if we don't hit 100 likes, there ain't no season 2. So yeah, click. I'll wait 5 seconds. Right, that's, uh, that should be done now. Uh, now, we can finally move on to the racing. As we'll start with Il Lombardia, uh, we've literally taken the lineup with the riders who still have fitness, because, uh, yeah, everyone's on 60 right now, which ain't good. But let's hope that Patrick Conrad and TJ Van Garderen can do something, maybe potentially a Pascal Encorn, uh, if he's got a good day. We'll see what happens between Bergamo and Combo. 246 uh, kilometers, sorry. Let's get it. I mean, it's a good end of the season. Plus one for Conrad, plus two for TJ Van Garderen, plus two for Camargo, plus one for Bieg, uh, which puts him on what, 60? 67! Go on, lad. But let's take some time to say goodbye to some of the riders we won't see for next season. Uh, I don't think we'll bring everyone here uh, on Paris Tour. So yeah, this is most likely the final race for someone... Like, uh, actually, no, I mean, it's probably the final race for Mikel Bieg. So we'll, we'll wish him a good run in the team he's joined. Um, if you want to know where he signed, uh, you can do so by uh, watching. Um, I think Joe will make a replay or a highlights of uh, the World Championship stream. Uh, but yeah, everyone were, everyone's transfers was announced. Uh, I can't remember where he signed. I think he went to Trek, actually. Yeah, I think he went to Trek. Mikel Bieg went to Trek, yeah. Encorn uh, went to Uno X. Um, Pitcock went to Astana. Some th there's a random guy that went to a random Polish team like WBA something. No wait no WBA K uh, KTM which is an Austrian team. Someone in our team joined with Cibetech. Sorry Vibetech. I mean yeah the, the transfers were a bit mad. Uh, but yeah let's forget about the transfers and focus on the racing today as our leader. Is Austrian. He's wearing the Austrian jersey, and hopefully, we'll see an Austrian jersey winning in whatever town we finish in. Uh, I think it's Como. All right, we've started the Madonna del Gizzalo, which is the main climb, obviously, of this Lombardia, uh, of the Giro di Lombardia, uh, with the Corvin di Sormano, obviously, which will come a bit later on. Uh, now, I know that this is usually where the peloton decides to make some moves, uh, decides to uh, increase the pace rather drastically. Uh, as you can see by uh, the fact that Bernal is already out of red energy. Um, so yeah, we're going to try and uh, maintain Conrad and TJ in a rather high position. Uh, Encore, Nielens and Bieg appear to be already gone. Uh, actually, if Nielens could protect Encore, Encore, if you could try to come back, that'd be good. Uh, but I can't really, I'm not exactly uh, expecting that to happen. Joe Almeida, Bob Jungels and Andrea Bugioli, our next signing. Uh, sorry, next year's rider for us, technically. Uh, have got a legal gap on the peloton because Tobias Ludwigsen is unable to bridge the gap. Um, right, but for now, for now we're doing well. For now we're doing well. I, I have a history of getting dropped in that climb. Uh, so the fact that we're still there is a good thing, uh, especially with still four riders, potentially six, if Incorn can make the cut uh, as we approach, uh, actually as we cross now the summit of the Madonna del Gizzalo, the church being on your left, there we are. This is the old, the, the the infamous church. As uh, there's literally, okay, that no, that's the water. I thought that was just the void. But so, some some very nice landscape as we are currently lost in uh, a lot of pine trees. Are these pine trees? I don't know, but there are trees in it. Good good landscape. We stand. Uh, actually, I stand corrected. The the church is there. There there's a lot of churches in it. Uh, that's the summit. There we go. It, it felt I didn't remember like seeing water next to it. Uh, but yeah. The uh, yeah right. You f forget what I just said like two minutes ago, Chase. And we are in what is the toughest climb of this race. Uh, the Colma di Sormano 
It's quite a short one, only 5 kilometers, you, you might think, but an average gradient of 12, knowing that the toughest part is at 23%, we're going to need a Patrick Conrad on top of his game, as he's currently dropping a few positions. However, TJ, TJ's doing well. TJ's doing well, and... I mean, we've never won a World Tour Classic. That is one of the big regrets we've we've had this season. Can today be the day that YouTube Cycling gets a dub on the World Tour race? Let's try to make it happen, shall we? All right. We're at the bottom of the uh, Comma di Sormano. 22 riders left at the front, including TJ Van Garderen and Patrick Conrad. Can we get this maiden World Tour win as a classic, obviously not a stage. Can we finally win a classic? We came close. We, we finished, I think, second of LVL, if I'm correct. Uh, we were here and there. Not on the island classic, that's for sure. Uh, we got a podium. I think we got second place on Quebec. We've always been close to the win, but we've never been able to be on that top step. But can today be the day? 23 riders as someone like Masnada and Zakarin are going to try and make a comeback. Uh, but I feel that these guys are out of luck. We've got two more climbs. The Chivideo will be followed by San Fermo de la Battaglia. Come on, guys. Come on, come on, come on, come on. And we've taken that left-hander, which means the peloton is going to start the Chivideo with an attack already from Dan Martin. Julian Lafilippe makes the move. Everyone is following Charban, Pino, Yates, Bernal, Carapaz, Formolo, Bardet. That's not Bernal, that's uh, the ba Bernal is just not there. Alright, Conrad is going to pace with the help of TJ Van Garderen. Big attack though from the Irishman, Daniel Martin. And uh, they've actually got themselves a little gap. Thibaut Pino and David Gaudu unable to bridge the gap with Charban, Yates, Alaphilippe and Dan Martin. Patrick Conrad is still in this group trying to navigate. Uh, between Galopin and all the Asia de la Mondiale riders that are still here, the likes of Aurélien Paripentre, Romain Bardet, uh, there's another guy, I don't know who he is from Asia de maybe Pierre Latour, indeed, indeed it is Pierre Latour. Attack from Julien Lafilippe again. Julien Lafilippe is currently 22nd in the lead as Conrad is being blocked by Tadej Pogacar. Alright, come on, come on Patrick, We've came, we, we came back on Alaphilippe and Patrick Conrad is still in the leading group. That's big from him. That's big from our Australian rider. Our leader, our classic leader, the, the rider that I've decided to bring to the team doing what needs to be done as Patrick Conrad is now being well, attacked by Maximilian Schachmann. Go to Martin Alaphilippe Yates. Dumoulin is the one chasing. I'm not going to pace as I don't want to use too much energy in the downhill portion. Let's try and come back on these five riders. Now one rider as Sharpman is the only rider at the front of said race. David Godu is the one chasing everyone. It should be Alaphilippe, doing he's the best downhill guy. Uh, but for now, it is a 15 second lead for the German leader of Bora Hansgrohe. As Asher Dezer still, still has four riders. Mad. I didn't expect to see that much riders for Asher Dezer. Pogacar has four Molo as a teammate. Godu still has Thibaut Pinot. No, Thibaut Pinot is not there anymore. Thibaut Pinot is not there anymore. And we're in the final climb. We're in the final climb, we're going to follow the moves, uh, or at least try to follow the moves, as Tij Benut has attacked, Dan Martin in the wheel, Schachmann, Godu, Yates, Conrad, in the wheel of the Britishman. The Britishman? The Brit. Come on, Patrick. Come on, lad. Six kilometers, we just need to hold on with our yellow until the summit of San Ferma de la Battaglia. Attack, counter-attack, should I say, from Julian Lafilippe, and look at him go. Look at Julian Lafilippe go, he's too good. He is too good. Can Yates come back on him? That would be absolutely phenomenal if he could. And yes, he can. And he's going to counter-attack the Frenchman. What a move from Simon Yates, the leader of Mitchelton Scott. Going for a move on his own. Alaphilippe and Gautu behind. We're going to take the wheel of Dan Martin. But we're out of yellow. I think the win might be a bit too short, you know. All right. Are they going to start the sprint immediately? Yes or no? Let's hope that they're not. They are. They are, they well and truly are, and we're not, we're not, one kilometer left. The win today in Combo is going to be for a French minute to one to the France as Julien Lafilippe wins ahead of Gaudu and Adam Yates. Fourth place for Charman as we come home in a respectable fifth position with Patrick Conrad. We tried where we could, uh, but they were just too strong for us.
just too strong for us. Tij Benu, Tom Barnett, Tim Wellens, Dan Martinen, Tom Dumoulin are going to complete today's top 10. Very nice 13th position for Aurélien Paré. Par contre, as Tij Van Garderen is in the final kilometers, Mikkel Bjerg has crashed and he is potentially out. I don't know. Let's see if he can go back on his bike. That would be a very sad end to his career with YouTube Cycling, though he's back on the bike very well. Congratulations, mate. Uh, and Tij Van Garderen is going to fail to achieve a top 20 as he comes home in 21st position, just behind Joe Almeida and Henrik Mas. I mean, it's, it's a fifth place nonetheless. It's not this bad. It's not what I wanted. It's not what you guys wanted, but it's still a fifth place. Which I'll, I mean, I'll take it. We're, we're not on the level of an Alaphilippe. We're just not. I think potentially we could have been with Yates and Godu. I really, I wanted to like follow them in the thumbnail. I think I even clicked on follow, but the gap was already made. Which is a shame, uh, but yeah, fifth position just behind Maximilian Schachmann as well, who's a better sprinter and better in the hills. Uh, uh, I'll take that. I'll take P5. Alright, final race of the episode, final race of the season, actually, Paris Tour. Uh, I said yesterday in Joe's stream that I'll try and find an interesting variant. I couldn't. It, it's been 20 minutes since I've been on the group SO and PCM Daily to try and find something related to Paris Tour. Uh, but there's none. There's none. The race is just not as interesting as it used to be by the looks of it. And uh, we'll have to, to deal with that. Uh, which means that the lineup we're going to bring for this very flat stage. Uh, we'll have Conrad, Benjamin Thomas, Pascal Einkorn, Chris Nielens, Thomas Pitcock for his final race. We need to have him. Sebastian Molano and David Decker. Oh, he's got 61 fitness. Fucking hell. Yeah, David Decker. Let's go. Look at them fitness peaks. Oh my god, this is so bad. Well, 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 well. Fitness-wise, we're not looking great, are we? Zero for Decker. There's no way he's getting through the meals. Uh, minus one for Encorn, zero for Conrad. The only guy with a fitness peak has a minus one. Good. However, you know what? Sebastian Molano could potentially be fighting for something today. And I think we'll, we'll, we'll try that. If Molano could hold on to all them hills, we may have something on our hands. Uh, if not, Patrick Conrad will be my leader, mate. What is the final breakaway of this season? Let's take a look. Jonas van Genesten for BNB Vitel Concept. Jacopo Mosca for Trek Sigafredo. Brian Alaphilippe for Saint Michel. Chris Nielens for YouTube Pro Cycling, Diego Rosa for Arkea Samsung, and finally, Mikel Delage for Groupama FDG. It is a breakaway that will not be taking the win today, let's be fair, uh, but if it did, we could potentially have a chance, um, despite our Chris Nielens being injured. I mean, you know what, we'll, we'll try and have him enjoy his final race, because, before, b b because after that, Jesus Christ, English, uh... Yeah, he's gone. I don't even know where he lives. I think he's he's the one that went to like a weird ass team. Ah, things you love to see. Let's pose it. Let, let's no, I couldn't even pose it. I can't even witness him being withdrawing. Ah, you've pissed me off so much, Wout Van Aert. So much. First you don't want to sign, then you beat me in Plouet. You've beaten us in Belgium. It is a pleasure to see you being injured. And you better trust me, I will carry on your injury on PCM 2020, lad. Right? If you've got a five-month injury, you better believe you're injured. Oh, we're on them dusty roads right now. 46 kilometers remaining. And uh, the breakaway is 1 minute and 20 seconds in the lead. As I said, it won't be a winning breakaway. Um, but, yeah, it, it's a good thing to let it away. Hold up. Why, why do you mean everyone? What do you mean? Alright, you better go back at the front of the race, David Decker, Sebastian Molano, Patrick Conrad, Pascal and Conrad, Benjamin Toba, or I will genuinely fire you, the same way I fired your mates. Chris Nielens is the only survivor, uh, but when I mean the only survivor, he's actually the only rider in my team, still, some, still somewhat able to do something. Like, Molano has been pacing 87 and he got dropped because I keep on getting blocked. Go back at the front and stop pissing me off. Matthew Holmes, stop attacking, right? This ain't a down under. You're not going to try and beat Richie Paul today. Allow it. 
Seven kilometers left. Uh, we're trying to come back still. Uh, like we're we're just trying yet yeah, to to make the comeback. We we did make like a nice return, uh, but I, I decided to take the rule of Calabuen and they decided to stop. So yeah, but Van der Poel isn't currently in the lead. Patrick Conrad is going to bring Sebastian Molano back with the sprinters, and that's the main thing at least. Uh, which means Molano will have a chance to sprint and to show why he should be the number one sprinter for next year and not Caden Groves. Zdenek Chiba is going to try and bring uh, Sam Bennett back on Mathieu Van der Poel. Alright, Laz, you're going to need to make a decision like very soon because your, your, your Van der Poel mate is winning. And Van der Poel has won. Wow. That was quick. It was very quick. One kilometer left. We're going to try and start the sprint with Molina. We're going to get blocked. Mathieu Van Apple wins Paris Tour ahead of Stiba, Gaviria, nope, Christophe, Ronnevegen, and Molano. That was a very shit sprint. I didn't ex I mean, the last corner just kind of destroyed me. And effectively, every single hill destroyed me. Which I had not seen coming. It's the fifth place, same as Lombardia, uh, but this time uh, I'm, I'm a bit more disappointed than the one with Patrick Conrad, I'm not gonna lie. Conrad, speak of him, finishes in 13th position, just behind Caleb Ewan and ahead of Kasper Asgrid. Yeah, he's, he's good, that Van der Poel guy. He's quite good. I think he's got a bright future ahead of him. Well done to him. Uh, P5 for Molano. I mean, in the hierarchy of sprinters, we're where we are. We're where we should be. Uh, we're even ahead of someone like Caleb Ewan. Uh, although I don't think he's had a good sprint, but I'll I'll take P5, I guess. Uh, before wrapping this episode, we'll just take a look at one thing, which are the exploits for this year, or the highlights, sorry. Um, if you've missed everything that happened, as Egan Bernal won the Giro d'Italia ahead of Tom Dumoulin and Rigoberto Uran, and Kemna was the best climber, Egan Bernal was the best sprinter and the best young rider. Three. Uh, distinctive jerseys for the Colombian as uh, we've moved to the Tour de France and uh, not a great tour for the Timineos as they don't have anything for once Primo Roglic winning the tour ahead of Thibaut Pinot Buchmann Jack Egg in the polka jersey Caleb in the green and Tadej Pogacar in the white jersey obviously TJ Van Garderen finishing in a very very surprising and respectable fourth position very close from that podium um, La Vuelta with Miguel Angel Lopez winning a first Grand Tour in his career ahead of Rafa Maika and Richard Carapaz in a very, very shocking ton of events. Tim Wellens finishing with the Polkadot jersey, which we held for so long with Luis Leon Sanchez, but we just didn't have the legs to carry the form on. Miguel Angel Lopez bringing home as well the points jersey, and Enric Mas being the best young rider of said Vuelta. As we move to the one-week tour, we've won three of them, starting with the Down Under with Tobias Foss. Uh, moving to Paris, it was Gavin Thomas taking the win as Primoz Roglic was winning the Tirreno Adriatico. Thibaut Pino won in Catalonia as Roglic took another win with the Italia Basque Country. Tom Dumoulin won the Tour de Romandie uh, when former winner of the Giro, Richard Carapaz, was winning on the Dauphiné. We won the Tour de Suisse with Rafa Maica following his incredible fitness towards the end of the Giro as Julien Alaphilippe took the win in Pologne. And finally, in a very interesting episode, Edval Boasenhagen winning the Bing Bong Tour, not something we expected, but something we cherished uh, because the Norwegian god is still here. We've won the first and the final um, small tours of the year, at least the UCI one, because nobody cares about the Guangxi Tour. Uh, world Championship-wise, Pete Sagan won the road race and Ron Dennis was world champion. We finished, I think, 30th, no, 25th, sorry, with TJ Van Garderen on the time trial. And somewhere around 12th position in the road race with same TJ Van Garderen. Uh, national championship wise, not many dubs for us. Uh, ben Swift winning in the UK, Thibaut in France, Ackermann in Germany, Aber Asturi in Spain, Louis Bendingsen in Germany, in Germany? Nope, in Denmark, Giulio Ciccone in Italy, Wout van Aert in Belgium, and Mathieu van der Poel in the Netherlands. Uh, finally, no, sorry, penultimate page, the monuments. As you can see, no wins, but some podiums, a third, play, a third place for Milan San Romo, a second place in Liège-Bastogne-Liège, as Caleb Ewan took the Primavera, Christophe took the Ronde, Mathieu van der Poel took Paris-Roubaix, ahead of Christophe and Nikita Abstra, with a very nice 32nd place from Heinrich Hausler. Maximilian Schachmann took LBL, and Julien Lafilippe took Lille Lombardia. We saw that in this episode, with Paris Conrad finishing in 5th position. Finally, other classic-wise, it is a win for Greg van Avermaet on the Big Bang Tour. 
euh, sur le Big Bang Classic, ma bad, et 3 Big Bang au rétro Harold Beck. Gorevel Game was won by Caleb Ewan. Shahman won the Amstel Gold Race. Mark Hirschi won a surprising Flesh Wallon. Shahman as well won the Cyclist Saint Sebastian. So that's Amstel, uh, Liege Baston Liege, and Saint Sebastian for the German of Borans. Grove, very nice year for him. Dylan Hollewegen won the Eurice Classics. Uh, as Jumbo Visma carried on their form with a win on the Breton Classic with Wout van Aert. We finished second in Hamburg with Molano and third with Timo Rosen in Breton. So again, we're there, but not on the top step. Uh, Richard Carapaz won Quebec ahead of Thomas Pitcock. And Mathieu van der Poel, him again, won the Grand Prix de Montréal. Very good year for the rider of Alpes in Phoenix. All right. We're on the 25th of October, which means the season is officially finished. Uh, before we check anything, I want to go to the infirmary. Uh, Wout van Aert, how long are you injured? You are injured. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Mid-November. That's a shame. You're only injured until the end of the season. Ah. I don't think anyone sees an issue with me uh, making him injured for next year. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I'm not hearing anyone disagreeing. I think that's a yes. Perfect. Uh, all right. Let's just take a look at the biggest moves of the transfer windows. As Jakob Fulsang went to Jumbo Visma, Gary Thomas has signed with Movistar. Jasper Stoven has gone to EF. Emmanuel Buchmann has replaced Gary Thomas at Ineos. Stefan Kung moves to Trek. Dylan Hronewegen goes to UAE, joining Gaviria and Christoph. Trentin goes to Trek as well, strengthening their cobble team. Uh, Simon Yates goes to Arkea. That means we'll have Bargill, Quintana and Yates. Seb van Mark moves to a Belgian team in, in uh, De Coninck, sorry. Rémi Cavagna joins Groupe MDG, going to a French team for the Frenchman. Uh, Jenk Chibar makes the exact opposite move as Seb van Mark as he joins EF, leaving De Coninck behind him. Okay, 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 okay. Let's take a look at our team for next season. Uh, where our best rider stats-wise is Sergio Andres Siguita with 77 and 77 and 70 sprint. What were you trained in, lad? Stage races climber, fair enough. Uh, all right, I'm gonna make like the. Um, the I'm gonna be fair, do I care about making. No, I'm not gonna make the training because this save is going to be transferred over on the next game. Uh, we'll then have Rafa Maika. What did I click on him? I don't know. 78, 76, 70. Magnus Court Nielsen. Uh, good stats all around for the Dane. Uh, anything evolution stat wise? He did improve in punch uh, uh, during the year. Moving up to 73. Decent. Benoît Cosnefroy, 17, 77. I'm pretty sure you had 79 when I signed you. Did you just, like, lose points? You didn't. Then I'm just blind. Caden Groves, which will, uh, who will be on a big sprinter for next year with 79 in sprints. Patrick Conrad, obviously we saw him uh, this season doing bid. Sebastian Molano, 77. David Decker with 78 sprints. He'll be a key part, a key part for next season. Biniam Gemai, 77 mountain and 72 sprint and 74 hills. Overall, an incredible rider who is currently trained in Poncha. Uh, we'll have to, to change that as I'll train you in, a, in what will be Climber Lad. Next up, we're going to have, obviously, TJ Van Garderen, keeping him for uh, at least three more years. Edvaldo Asenagen winning the uh, the uh, Big Bang Tour, allowing him to get a two more year extension, or two year extension, actually. Stan de Wilf, who will be our leader in Cobbles with 74. Tied up with Magnus Court Nielsen. Yep. Uh, not much to say. He's progressed a bit, uh, but not as much as I expected. Uh, Tobias Foss, same for him. Progressed, but not as much as expected. And kind of uh, like disappeared after the very good start of the season he had. Uh, winning, obviously, uh, the Down Under and staying on the UAE Tour. Ben Swift, after an incredible first year, keeps uh, his spot, obviously, in YouTube cycling. Jonas Vingegaard is one of our new signings as well. Uh, same for Eugeni Bugallo, which we'll learn to uh, we'll, we'll, yeah we'll learn to know him in the uh, upcoming years. Benjamin Thomas uh, stays with us. Andrea Bergioli joins us, the 21-year-old Italian Pancha. Uh, Heinrich Hausler is sadly still here. Johan Price Peterson. I know that's not how it's meant to pronounce, but I'll call him Captain Price. So Captain Price joins us, replacing genuinely Mikkel Berg. He is our new Mikkel Berg. Harold Tejada is still here, same for his Colombian teammate in Diego Andres Camargo. One of the new signings, Tao Zhao, some very good stats all around for the uh, 21 year old Chinese rider. We'll have him in Baruda for the remainder of the season. Uh, joining us as well are Clément Champoussin, 
Predrag Petrovic, we've kept Stefan de Bode. Luis Leon Sanchez, whose stats have gone down massively. Uh, Charles Planet is still here as a West Rider of the effective, but we all know that without Charles Planet, there is no YouTube cycling. Uh, development team wise, we've got one good rider in Cristiano Canino, uh, and then we'll have good old Marius Grigalevicius for Lithuania. A, a, a lot of long names. We've got Aquilino Lopez Garcia. Uh, Jack Souvenir, which doesn't seem really British to me. Afonso Enrique Taborda, Ferdinando Lunardini, sorry, Lunardini, my bad. Raymond Boutry, Julian Vedze, Joseph Isman, and Daniel Knudla. Uh, let's take a look if there's any guy that's out of a contract before wrapping this up. Uh, who didn't get resigned? Alright, no one. Like those are the main, uh, main uh, retiring riders, the likes of Greipel. Pozzo Vivo, Richese, Matthias Frank, Darrell MP. Who are you? Gampiero Minoddo. Good start all around for the Italian rider. Uh, yeah, 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 not, not great. Not great. Alright. Let's just take a look at the teams that were promoted. Alpecin has gone up to World Tour with Arkea Samzik, which means that two teams did go down. Uh, we've got a new team in Air Belgium, I have to take a look at who that is. But going down, I think, is Kofidis and NTT. Who is Air Belgium? Hmm. I don't know. Thomas Prengers, is this? Yeah, it is Paul Vlanderen, isn't it? It is Paul Vlanderen. Okay. Alright, 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 alright. And Virgen de, Virgen de Fatima going up, signing the likes of Siske Vicius and Nicolas Meis. Go on, lads. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right. And Zalfero Mobile as well coming up. Mad. Signing John Kurtz, a Luxembourgish rider with some very good stats. And Leandro Limonta. Okay. And Giovanni Visconti, who still hasn't withdrawn. Withdrawn? Retired. But fair enough. Fair enough. This, nevertheless, is where we are going to wrap not only this episode, but mainly this season. Uh, it has been a great pleasure, like, during this. Benji and Joe don't know that I'm going to say this, yeah. Uh, but, like, genuinely thank you to the both of them for, for having me. Uh, I mean, mainly thank you to Benji because he's the one that came up with, like, the idea. And the, the well, having Joe and I. Uh, but, yeah, it, it was genuinely incredible. And I hope you all have enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed doing it. Uh, it wasn't the easiest series to pull off, uh, I'll have to be honest. Sometimes we, we had to be rushing because of our respective schedules. Uh, but just being able to make this entire season work uh, before the end of PCN 2020 has been a challenge. But we pulled through and yeah, I, I hope you guys uh, just enjoy the content we've produced. This series will be back for a season two on Precycling Manager 2020, not on release day. Uh, we'll wait a few weeks, potentially months, uh, we, we shall see. But yeah, um, I will try uh, and give you guys this save. Um, I, I mean, I know we're going to have like one more stream uh, to talk about our expectations and how we felt about the year. Uh, during that stream, I will give away the save. So if you want to play with this on PCM 2019, uh, this is your chance. And yeah, as I said, again, thank you everyone that decided to do watch. My name has been Blackwall. It has been an honor talking to you for 35 episodes. I've only done like a third of them. So if I do some quick math, that's a solid 12. Well, technically it's 11.6, but we move. Uh... It's not even 11.6. I'm just chatting shit at this point. Uh, <laughs> I just don't want this to end. But yeah, uh, I'll see you in the very near future for some PCM 2019 gameplay, but mainly for some PCM 2020 gameplay. I hope everyone is hyped for the game as much as I am. But my name has been Black War. Have a humongous day. And goodbye. Pull up, pull up in the gold I'm leading. But them all the man need feeding. I don't wanna go bombie. Them I don't know what I do when I go from feeling. Leading the pack in black and I'm on with the bad. Snapping with a phone and dab. Boss up a man with a duster. Put him in a drip and sip blockbuster.